Hello all, welcome to another new day uh, to meet another new interesting personality from uh, the Forgotten Annals of Indian History under the Ajatika Amrit Mahasav story series from Momish Ram Musings. Yesterday, we met uh, King Matanda Varma all the way from Travancore, Kerala region, isn't it? Today, let's move to a southeastern part of India and uh, meet one dynasty which has been totally lost in the annals of the Indian history. Now, my dear friends, how many of you really can tell all the seven states in northeastern uh, India and their capitals without any hesitation? Most of us will not be able to, even me, to be honest. That's because our history books or our geography books doesn't contain much information about northeastern states. Why is this happening? Have you ever asked any of uh, your teachers or the historians with whom you have interactions? Anyways, that's another question to ponder about and worry at a later date. Uh, let us go ahead and meet this uh, interesting uh, dynasty from the northeastern India. The moment we talk about northeastern India, we always remember that there are se uh, seven states and I'm going to talk about Tripura. Now, Tripura being in the third smallest country, uh, state in India, you must be wondering what big deal about talking about Tripura. But unfortunately, my dear friends, the current geography of Tripura is very much small in size. But this kingdom is in existence right from 5,000 years back. Can you believe it? Yes, that is true. The Tripura kingdom is or called Pipara, the great Pipara kingdom, Pipara means adjacent to the uh, river banks of Brahmaputra, is in existence right from 5,000 years back. But today, in most of the people, uh, people's mind, Indian's mind, or even other foreigners, think that the moment we talk about northeastern India, we only think about the greenery, the beautiful sceneries, or the tribal dances. But there is a lot more to this than what we are seeing on the internet or on the social media, my dear friends. If I tell you that the Tripura dynasty is actually uh, has records uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, um, existence right from Ramayana ages, that is approximately 5,000 years back. Can you really believe it? The first king, known king of uh, Tripura dynasty is from Luna dynasty. And uh, from Luna dynasty, we, they moved on to Manikya dynasty approximately in the, around the 14th century. So I want to introduce you to the Manikya dynasty, which who are very progressive kings right, right in the 14th, from 14th century onwards. If I tell you that the uh, ladies were also given equal importance in the Manikya dynasty, and they were also help, uh, educated, they were also helping in the administrative manners, right from the 14th century onwards, will you be able to believe it? But that is true, my dear friends. The, in fact, the name Manikya dynasty came because Tripura king got married to a girl from Manipur. And because he had taught her as his better half, not just a wife. And in fact, he thought that his wife is also has equal authority and equal responsibility in managing not only his, their household, but also the entire state. That is the reason why they, he, he chose the name Manikya uh, as his dynasty name. And the first king who started uh, using this Manikya dynasty as their name is, is Maha Manikya from 14th century onwards. And this is their emblem. And if you see, the current Tripura is limited only to this small part of a light green area, which is being shown here, right? But the entire Tripura is the, uh, the greater Tripura kingdom has a lot of area from the current Burma, that is the East Pakistan side, as well as the Bengal side. It was all ruled from 14th to 17th, 18th century. And during 18th century, uh, uh, most of the Mughal invasion and the British invasions, Bengal revolutions, all these things have started taking away passing chunks of land into uh, the opponent's hands. But still, even then, the Tripura king, uh, kingdom was very prosperous kingdom and they were very progressive and everybody has equal right to uh, for uh, decision making or even the in the day-to-day -day political affairs. As I already mentioned that 
the first king who has started ruling uh, the greater uh, tripura kingdom uh, with uh, from manikya dynasty is Ma king maha manikya from that time onwards till 549 years even i mean till 1949 the, these this very same dynasty ruled tripura that means it shows that these kingdoms are um, kings are really good kings whom all the people of the greater tripura region love and they and they and these kings are also taking care of their people in a equally good manner otherwise you, if you had seen any history book any dynasty will be there only for two to uh, five generations max right after the fifth generation the next uh, se next set of kings who are, are coming were well, either the weak kings or even invaded by some other opponents uh, and that they, they are losing their kingdoms and all the, that dynasty was going into thin air but the truth here is this manikya dynasty is uh, very strong and was holding their fort very carefully and very strongly across the greater tripura region yeah uh, if you happen to remember the lineage of different kings like chola chera delhi sultanat or the moguls you can see only three generations five generations or six generations here in manikya dynasty total 184 kings ruled uh, this uh, entire state for 549 years isn't it amazing and the last person to succeed their uh, uh, royal uh, powers to indian government is the queen so we have 184 kings plus one queen who had ruled having said that i'm not saying that uh, uh, she's the only queen who has taken part in the political affairs of the Romanika dynasty because earlier itself as right from the start of Mahamanikya itself they are uh, all these kings were giving equal importance to ladies in their household seeing this even the common man in Tripura was giving equal importance and in fact it was not it uh, though they don't want to call it as a matriarchal society even though it's a patriarchal society both men and women have the equal role and responsibility how pro progressive their uh, thinking is isn't it uh, they have built uh, Ujjayanta Palace in uh, Agarthala, in the current Agarthala of Tripura region, uh, which is like in 18th century itself. Look at how beautiful this palace is. It has been built in a European style. All the kings, all the uh, royal family members used to have good education from nearby Bengal or in, uh, even they had gone abroad as well. And once when they got their education, they should come back to the uh, state, that motherland, and help the people in their motherland. And while doing so, they should pass on their education, which they had learned in other different regions, to the native uh, people of Tripura region. Unfortunately, as I already mentioned, none of the history books in India documented the, about Manikya dynasty in detail. The only source of information which we have today is my Rajamala book. Like how we, when we talked about Queen Dida, we talked about Rajatarangini book, which is the main source of information for all the historical data from uh, Jammu and Kashmir region. Here, Rajmala book from uh, is the main documentary source for us from uh, to know about the Manika, uh, Manikya dynasty in Tripura. And having said all these things if i ask you one simple question you might be taken for a surprise it's not a question i'll just pass uh, tell you this fact do you, you all know rd burman and sd burman isn't it what if i tell you rd burman and sd burman are also linked to this manikya dynasty would you be taken by surprise or not yes my dear friends rd burman and sd burman are do belong to this Manikya dynasty. In fact, they are the grandchildren of Veer Chandra Manikya. That is the reason why I had put his photograph here so that you will be able to understand the links. During the 1857 revolts, there were revolts all over the place, right? Even Tripura was not left behind. There were a lot of revolts and uh, 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 strikes against British and they all, all the Tripura natives wanted to send British away. After all that revolt and everything, unfortunately, Bhil uh, Chandra Manikya's second son, uh, N.D. Chandra Manikya, wanted to move away from royalty and live in common life in Bengal. So that is the time when he moved to Bengal. 
and ND Chandra Manikya's grandson, I mean, uh, son's son is uh, our R.D. Burman and S.G. Burman, who are kind of interested in films and moved to Bombay and they made the name for themselves. What if N.D. Chandra Manikya was not really keen on uh, moving out of the royalty? Then maybe we would have seen uh, R.D. Burman as a king of uh, Tripura region, not as a music writer, isn't it? That is how the fate takes you to uh, the places where you deserve to be, isn't it? The last known king for this Manikya dynasty is Birbik um, Chandra Manikya, who is as progressive uh, king as Mahamanikya. And he is the one who is instrumental in setting up the airport in Agartala, who is instrumental in setting up the universities because he felt that education is must for all, one and all. There shouldn't be any demarcation for getting free education. And, for, uh, and he wanted to see a free India. Free India was his dream. All these people uh, from the Manikya dynasty, the rulers, were interacting with all the social reformers, uh, well-known scholars at that point of time. and. Everybody is appreciate. And in fact, uh, Veer Bikram Chandra Manikya is the person who has uh, funded our uh, Jagdish Chandra Bodh uh, uh, research activities as well. Isn't this uh, amazing? In, uh, he was also a close associate of uh, uh, Ravindranath Tagore as well. In fact, Ravindranath Tagore visited uh, Vijayanta Palace a lot of times, even just before his death. And in fact, he is the person, uh, Veer Bikram Chandra Manikya Maharaja is the one who had uh, given uh, the title saying Bharat uh, Ratna, not Ratna, uh, to Ravindranath Tagore, which is called the son of Bharat. Uh, um, but unfortunately, he has passed away in 1942. Then uh, his son is just around 14 years of age and as per British rules, he cannot become a king at that point of time. Then Maharani Kanchan Prabha Devi is the one who had <coughs> started acting as a royalty uh, on behalf of uh, the, her son. And she is a person who has signed up the treaty to uh, give Tripura, I mean, to, uh, for Tripura to join Indian uh, Union. That was also an interesting and a long story, in fact, because when, uh, in, uh, during 1947, when the division of Pakistan and India has happened, a lot of lands from Tripura, on whom actually Tripura has claimed, and Tripura has their, I mean, the uh, Manikya dynasty has their control, have gone into eastern Pakistan. So that is uh, the Tripura region, the entire Tripura region was covered all three sides by eastern Pakistan, and only there is one, uh, one uh, on the one side, there is linked to India, Indian subcontinent. And uh, just because Maharani Kanchana Prabha Devi is a lady, most uh, most of the uh, terrorists or the immigrants started uh, uh, preparing for the coups and they started preparing a lot of uh, planning for a lot of revolutions against the royalty family. That is when she realized that she is not able to, I mean, uh, uh, balance the royal, uh, I mean, take care of their her own uh, people and the kingdom in an effective manner when all these other external forces are trying to derail her power in Tripura region. And that is when she immediately called up our Sadhavar Vallabhai Patel and asked his help. And with his help, she has signed a treaty so that Tripura can join the Indian Union. Even now, after the uh, royal days have been seized in India, the royal family of Manikya, uh, Tripura region still are very active. In fact, they mix with the people they left in, uh, I mean, on a, a daily basis. And the current heir of Tripura dynasty still works very closely with Tripura and wants Tripura to be established as a self, uh, uh, full fledged. Uh, uh, the university uh, and full fledged uh, stayed on its own with all the facilities. So that's all, my dear friends, for today. And I want to uh, talk to you about another interesting dynasty from this northern Asian e India in another day or another story. Till then, if you are in, uh, too keen to know more about Manikya dynasty, you can start Googling in. But unfortunately, as I told you, not much information is available except in the Rajmala book which is written in Bengali, Bengali, you can start looking at it and you can get to know more details about it. 
have a safe day have fun keep smiling meet you tomorrow with another interesting story bye bye